I ended up with legit potato feet. It looks like a potato. My elbows are like basically back to normal. It's like a smidge dry, but two of them have slightly dry elbows. Why are people like this? Why are doctors like this? Going through this was so difficult. I thought I was gonna make it through without crying. Hello, my friends. I am so excited to finally be able to sit down here and say that I am officially just over one year steroid free. Topical steroids, not anabolic steroids. I've never used anabolic steroids. So this means it's time for a one year topical steroid withdrawal skin update. But since this will hopefully be my last video on this topic if I don't flare again and have my life destroyed again, I really wanna just make this a comprehensive video about kind of all of it what topical steroid withdrawal is, my journey with it, how I ended up having it, how I healed from it, everything I did, like the kind of timeline of healing, because that's something that I wish I could have seen from literally everyone when I was going through it, and then just kind of like tips, recommendations, current update, etc. So let's just dive right in and start at the beginning. In middle school, slash when I was a little bit younger than that, I think, I had very small patches of eczema on my arms, just like right here, and like right here, just like a small amount of eczema. I started using hydrocortisone to get rid of it. And I, I think it went away, I honestly don't even remember, it wasn't that big of a deal. But then my freshman year of high school, my skin freaked out. My neck crusted over, my eyelids crusted over, it hurt to move and to turn my neck because it was so dry. And looking back, I'm pretty sure this was my first flare from stopping the use of topical steroids. I went to a ton of different doctors, got a bunch of different tests done, allergy tests, you name it. They all said, this isn't eczema, but we don't really know what it is. And then they're just like, okay, goodbye. And then I finally found this one doctor who was like, oh, let's try this. Here's a prescription for some topical steroids. Test it out and see how it goes. And it was a miracle. It cleared up my skin completely. I finally had a cure, or so I thought. And for the next like 10 years, I would occasionally get flares and every time I did, I would just put some steroids on it and then it would go away and it was fine. Until one day I went to pick up my prescription from the pharmacist and he was like, you know, you shouldn't be using these regularly, right? Like they've talked to you about the side effects and I was like, side effects? No? He was like, yeah, if you're using them regularly, they start to thin the skin. And I was like, oh, that doesn't sound great. This was before I knew anything about health, by the way. Before I was aware that, like, a medication that a doctor might prescribe you might have very deleterious side effects. As far as I can remember, no doctor had ever warned me of literally any side effects of using topical steroids. I just went in and I was like, hey, I have this issue and these steroids have been helping. Is there something else I should do? They're like, no, let me just re-prescribe the steroids. Here you go, have fun. So I was like, okay. So I just kept using them. So after I learned that, you know, they aren't the best thing to use long-term over and over a day in and day out, I tried to scale back my use of the steroids. But every time I did, my skin shortly thereafter would flare again and I would end up using the steroids again and it kind of just like got caught in this loop. Little did I know that every time I was trying to stop using the steroids, I was going through steroid withdrawal. I was going through so many tubes of topical steroids. This is a picture from literally just when I was living at my old place, so that was, what, two-ish years? And that was after I had learned about the side effects and was trying actively to scale back, so I'm pretty sure I was using even more than that for the previous eight years. And then finally, a year ago, my body just grew a tolerance to the steroids and they literally stopped working. Like my skin started flaring, the steroids were not helping, and I could feel them like just destroying my body. My eyelids felt so paper thin that they were really itchy and I would rub them and I was like worried it was going to tear through the eyelid and it was just it was terrifying. So I initially decided to quit using the steroids just because they clearly were not working anymore and were just making things worse. I didn't realize what I was setting myself up for. But it was at this point that I decided to quit using steroids and also dedicate myself to healing my body from whatever it was going through. My skin is not 
not doing so great. My eyelids are super inflamed and everything is just red. Something has to change. I'm kind of considering just generally overhauling my entire life and throwing everything that I can at it. So that was the beginning of June 2019 and at the time I thought it was very likely that what was happening was autoimmune related because I have celiac disease which is an autoimmune disease which if you have one autoimmune disease you're a lot more likely to have another one so I figured it's probably autoimmune. It seemed to present in an autoimmune-ish nature so that was my ongoing theory, but I was still constantly researching, trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And eventually I found this diagnosis of topical steroid withdrawal. And the more I looked into it, the more insane it was how much my symptoms matched the exact symptoms of topical steroid withdrawal. Once I found that, everything made so much sense. Fortunately, or what I thought was fortunately at the time, the dermatologist who literally decided discovered topical steroid withdrawal had an office like an hour away from where I lived. So I immediately made an appointment and I went to go see him. That was one of the biggest letdowns of all doctor's appointments in my life. Basically, he doesn't think that celiac disease is a real issue or a thing. And then he also basically told me that like, there's nothing that you can do for topical steroid withdrawal. There's nothing you can do to heal faster or mitigate the symptoms. Like all you can do is make yourself comfortable by sitting in a bath for 10 hours a day. And I was like, well, I got work to do. So I'm not about to sit in a bath for 10 hours a day for the next two years, thanks. Why are people like this? Why are doctors like this? This is why I get so frustrated every time I go to the doctor. I'll link that video with the full rant down in the description below if you really want to see how disappointed I was, but just to keep it short, basically he said that it would take me three to four years to heal based on my prior use of topical steroids and that there was literally nothing that I could do to help my body heal. That all I could do was just like grit my teeth and bear it and take baths to relieve the pain. He tried to convince me that diet and lifestyle played zero factor in healing, which is just so dumb because clearly the healthier you are, the better your body can heal. The less other stuff that your body has to deal with, the more it can focus on healing what needs to be healed. Like, uh, ugh. Anyway, after that, I set out to prove him wrong. He said it was gonna take three to four years. I said it would take me one year and I was determined. So before we get into what I did, I wanna briefly explain what topical steroid withdrawal really is, like biologically, so that you have some context to understand what it requires to heal from it. First, I wanna stress that topical steroid withdrawal is not eczema. I get so many people messaging me being like, how did you heal from eczema? I was not healing from eczema. Eczema is autoimmune. Topical steroid withdrawal is a literal drug withdrawal. They present very similarly as far as some of the symptoms go, but they have two very, very different root causes. However, that being said, a lot of the things that I did to heal from topical steroid withdrawal would also probably help with eczema. But I just wanna clarify that they're not the same. The theory within the topical steroid withdrawal community is that eczema is mostly, mostly a childhood issue and most adults outgrow it. So most adult eczema that you see is actually topical steroid withdrawal because so many people have been prescribed topical steroids and they just have to keep using them and then every time they try to come off of them, they get flare ups of what looks like eczema. So with topical steroid withdrawal, the root cause is the chronic use of topical steroids. Topical steroids are corticosteroids. So this topical medication mimics cortisol in the body. So as you're applying it, you're literally constantly dosing your body with excess cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone. It is what elevates when you are in stressful situations. It is a chemical messenger in the body. And as such, it communicates with all other hormones in the body. So if you mess up one, you mess up your whole body. Some examples of this are that an increase in cortisol decreases thyroid stimulating hormone. So with topical steroid withdrawal, since you've had elevated cortisol and now you're decreasing it, your thyroid hormone increases. And I actually saw this in my blood work when I went and got some tests done, I think about three months into this. My TSH was slightly elevated. An increase in cortisol also decreases inflammation. So if you have constantly elevated cortisol and constantly suppressed inflammation, when you take away the cortisol, you get inflammation. 
And this was also reflected in my blood work. My C-reactive protein, which is like the marker of inflammation, was like literally off the charts. And one of the other huge ways that this influences your body is that if you have chronically elevated cortisol, this is going to decrease your adrenal function because your adrenals are what produce cortisol. So since you already have cortisol, there's no reason for them to be producing cortisol. So when you take that away, your adrenals are kind of sleepy where they aren't used to being able to produce the amount of cortisol that you should have during the day. So in a way, topical steroid withdrawal leads to HPA axis dysfunction, commonly known as adrenal fatigue. So this causes all sorts of unpleasant symptoms. I'm just gonna go through the symptoms that I experienced, but there are other symptoms that certain people do experience with topical steroid withdrawal, so this is by no means an all-inclusive list. First thing is the most obvious, which is the skin symptoms. It looks like really bad eczema, which is why most people think it is eczema. It itches so bad. It is like a bone deep itch where you just wanna keep scratching until you literally scratch through the skin, until the pain of scratching is stronger than the itch. That's like the only way to, you can't even satisfy the itch. Like it's, it's indescribable how horrible it is. I would scratch myself so much that I was literally just like, bleeding. And then on top of that, my skin at any point was a combination of dry, flaky, oozy, and red. The redness comes from the fact that topical steroids constrict blood vessels, so when you go off of them, your blood vessels dilate, so your skin literally just like gets super red because all the blood is coming towards the surface. And then it just gets so dry that it was just so painful to move at all. Like anytime I would move like a finger, it would hurt. It would just be like I was breaking my skin. And it was so flaky that this is gonna sound disgusting, but I would sweep my floors and just have like piles, piles of flakes of skin. Cause I was constantly just like flaking off all over the place. I was molting. And then at certain times it would be super oozy. So if I was like, this sounds gross and it was, it was horrible. Um, but I would like scratch and then under the, the skin that I scratched off, it would just ooze and be like sticky. And then because of the inflammation, my body started to get so swollen. I ended up with legit potato feet. Look at my foot. And ankle. It's so swollen. It looks like a potato. Oh my goodness. My legs were so swollen that I couldn't like bend over or squat down to put shoes on. I would go to bed and when I would get my legs out of bed, it was just so painful because it felt like like all the blood was rushing back to my legs and it felt like they were gonna explode from the pressure. So at my worst, those symptoms in themselves were debilitating because I would wake up in the morning and I would just be terrified to move one inch of my body because I knew that as soon as I did, it would be incredibly painful and I just didn't want to get out of bed. At my worst, my neck got so dry that I didn't even have to touch it and it was just bleeding. Because if I tried to turn it at all, it would just crack through the skin. Walking up and down stairs was, I feel like this is almost an exaggeration, but not really. It was like a harrowing experience. Like it was so painful because I couldn't bend my legs. As far as some of the other symptoms that I experienced go, one of the big ones was insomnia. Because my cortisol was so messed up and because I was so deeply itchy all of the time, especially randomly in the middle of the night, I could not sleep through the night. I would wake up multiple times at night when I was asleep, I was barely asleep, and it was months of not being able to sleep well. I also had weird temperature regulation issues, probably partially due to the swelling. I would get like rushes of heat and rushes of cold through my body. I also would get huge epinephrine spikes at the smallest things. You know that feeling when you like miss a step going down the stairs and you just feel like some, like that feeling shoot through your body? That's an epinephrine spike and because my cortisol was messed up my epinephrine response was messed up and so i remember i was standing like looking at a map at a shopping mall at one point and i turned around and there was someone behind me normally you'd just be like oh whoops sorry no no i like felt like i almost had a heart attack my groin lymph nodes were very very swollen for quite a long time and that was fun and then at the very beginning of it i noticed some like shaking with muscle tension like if i would pick something up my muscles would like shake a little bit that was kind of terrifying. Throughout this process, I looked for so many different patterns to see what might be causing the flares so that I could, you know, reduce my chance of flaring. The only thing that I found conclusively was that stress 100% 
triggered flares in my skin. So one of the biggest things that I did throughout this process was trying to manage my stress. So to give you a quick timeline of my healing process, in month one, I started following the autoimmune protocol. I started a few different supplements, which I'll talk about in just a bit. And my skin actually completely cleared up. I went from this to this in like a month. And I was super stoked. But then, started to go downhill again. All of month two is just like a slow decline. I hit my rock bottom, my absolute worst, about three and a half months in. This is where I was so swollen that it was incredibly painful to stand up in the morning, move around in general. I was so red. I walked down the street once and everyone was just staring at me. I was bleeding and flaking and itching and constantly cleaning up skin flakes and it was, I was a mess. From there, I started slowly trending upwards throughout the fourth month. In month five, I had some sort of stressful event. I'm looking at my notes right now. I just wrote stress-induced flare, but only 40% as bad as when it was at its worst. So something happened, I don't remember. But then I started recovering and I didn't fully recover before I just had another series of stressful events happen in month six. I was trying to move and there was just a lot going on there that we don't need to get into, but that was super stressful. Then I also went through a breakup at that time and I think something else happened, I don't remember. But I flared again and it got about 70% as bad as it had when I was in month 3.5. Starting in month seven, after I moved out and ended up moving in with some family, I noticed my skin make huge improvements. I was finally able to sleep through the night for a few nights. That was huge. My skin day by day was getting better. By month eight, I think that's when my skin really just kind of started to take off and really start to just day by day get better and better and feel like I wasn't trapped in a painful body. The only thing is that in months seven and eight, I also did, I think, start to have more cortisol issues, which I assume is just my cortisol re-regulating. I started gaining weight fairly rapidly, not like a ton of weight, like obviously I haven't gained a ton of weight, but I stopped being able to easily maintain my lower weight, and I think that would just be because my cortisol was so suppressed while on topical steroids that it probably, you know, my body overcompensated and it just went up, and now it'll go back down and start evening out, but I have a feeling it's gonna bounce back and forth a little bit as my body inside continues to heal. In months nine and 10, my skin was pretty much fantastic. I had a few days where I was like, oh, that's a little red or a little dry or a little flaky or a little itchy, but I never had any like big flares or anything. In the last two months, my skin has just been doing amazing. I'm sure my cortisol is still a little bit out of whack. I can't really tell. It has been a little bit difficult for me to lose the fat that I've gained, so I think that is still a symptom, but as of now, my current issues are that my skin still doesn't have all of its elasticity back. So sometimes you can tell like with my neck, my neck is still a little bit crinkly when I turn it. If it's like scrunched in a certain way, you can see that it doesn't quite behave like normal skin. Same with my eyelids. Like when I smile and have expressions, you can tell they're just a little bit not normal. I do get occasional itching when I sweat or when I'm in like a warm shower. Not like the deep itching, but it's still a little bit uncomfortable. Like right now my armpits are a little bit sweaty, a little bit itchy back here. I've had no redness at all in the last month. Overall, my skin is almost perfect. The dryness is basically gone. I did have a tiny little patch of dryness like right here, like one little flake of dry skin the other day. And then I do have just like a little bit of dryness behind my armpit because the, the sweating is itching. Oh, now that I'm itching, I need to keep itching. Okay, we're good. I am sleeping through the night. My sleep is mind-blowingly good right now. I don't think I have any more swelling. The crazy thing is that I told you guys about this like two years ago. I got di diagnosed. I don't know. My gums are degrading or at least they were degrading so bad that my teeth, like the bones of my teeth were starting to degrade. So I was going to need like a gum graft, a gum graft surgery to replace my gums. But in the last couple months, all of the pain and sensitivity that I had in my gums is Gone. I don't know if this is just a coincidence. I have a feeling it's not a coincidence. I'm finally letting my fingernails grow out because I don't scratch myself so hard that I bleed anymore. I can afford to have long fingernails. This is amazing. And someone did ask me if I've experienced any skin discoloration and the answer is no. As far as I can tell, my skin is like doing what it's supposed to do. So as you can see, everything is looking super clear right now. My face 
is basically back to normal. My chest has no redness on it whatsoever. I just have a few lines on my neck still. My arms are looking super clear. My elbows are like basically back to normal. There's no elephant skin going on. They're just like a smidge dry, but who doesn't have slightly dry elbows? My hands are like 98% back to hand texture. I think they just have a little ways to go, but they're not cracked and bleeding and itchy and flaky anymore. My stomach is perfectly clear. My legs are perfectly clear. The elephant skin around my knees is basically gone. Basically, I'm doing good now. So the part that I'm sure you all have been waiting for, at least all of you who have topical story that are watching this video, have been waiting for what I did to heal. Actually, first I wanna start with what I did not do because there are a lot of common treatments that I see people using that I did not follow. The first thing is that I did not do no moisture therapy. From the beginning, I felt confident enough in my healing. Like I felt like I was healing rapidly enough to not want to put myself through the pain of that. For anyone who hasn't heard of that, that's basically where you avoid all contact with water. Like you barely shower, you barely even, do you brush your teeth? I don't know. You barely drink water, you don't apply any moisturizers to your skin, you just avoid all water. And for some people it seems to rapidly speed up healing, but it also seemed incredibly horribly painful and I just didn't want to deal with that so I just didn't do it. I also did not use any biologics, immunosuppressants, things like Duxapent. I see a lot of people using these things and from what I can tell most people flare as soon as they come off and I personally didn't want to use a drug to treat a withdrawal from another drug. That just seemed very counterintuitive to me. It kind of seems like they just suppress the symptoms. They don't actually help your body heal. And then I also did not taper off steroids. This was entirely unintentional because I had no idea what was happening when I went off steroids, but some people try to taper off to lessen the effects. Usually those people seem to flare just as bad by the time they get off steroids. So I don't know if that's something worth trying, but I did not taper off. What I did do is implement a bunch of different practices to help reduce inflammation, help heal my gut, and help support my liver and my body's natural detox system. It is important to note that part of this treatment protocol was designed because I have celiac disease, took a ton of antibiotics as a kid, and I've never done a proper gut healing protocol, so the likelihood that I still had some amount of damage in my gut was factored in to what I was doing to heal my body. So some of this focuses a lot more on gut healing as opposed to specifically healing from topical steroid withdrawal, but again, if you have any damage to your gut, helping your body heal in general is going to help your body heal from topical steroid withdrawal. So I'm going to try to go through these things quickly and just explain what I did as opposed to also why I did every single thing, because we would literally be here for hours. So the first thing I did was follow the autoimmune protocol. This is a specific diet designed for people with autoimmune issues. I have celiac disease, that's why I specifically chose to follow it. But I mostly did it because AIP is very anti-inflammatory. I have my celiac disease basically under control. I wasn't doing it to control autoimmune issues. I was doing it for the anti-inflammatory properties and also because eczema is an autoimmune issue. So if I did still have any underlying eczema, I wanted my body to not have to really deal with any foods that may be triggering those symptoms. I also added in a bunch of different supplements. I'm not gonna list all of them because I don't want, you know, I, this is a specific supplement regimen tailored to me and my body and what I was going through and I don't want to just like recommend everything and just have other people follow the same supplement protocol because I think it's kind of irresponsible and dangerous. But some of the key supplements that I found were really helpful is first the Ned CBD oil. This transformed my sleep. I took it for 30 days straight and by the end of the 30 days, I have an aura ring. I'm not wearing it right now, but it tracks my sleep. My sleep score had substantially gone up. It certainly didn't fix it entirely, but I felt so much better when I was taking it regularly. I also took collagen regularly to help rebuild my skin tissue, help heal my gut. I also took a really good fish oil supplement, curcumin, glutamine, zinc. I took a probiotic colostrum, and a digestive enzyme. So diet and supplements played probably the biggest part in my healing journey, but also transforming my skincare routine was, I don't know if it helped me heal as much as kept me sane. I made a whole video on my skincare routine with all of the products that were helping, so I will link that down in the description box below. But what I found was really helpful was switching to all natural products. Most of the products I used in the first place were very, very clean, but I just made sure that everything that I was using was like EWG certified, really, really good for me. I used this huge concoction of oils with some essential oils for my skin, and it helped with the itching 
so much. It didn't cure it by any means, but without it, I was a ton worse. Something else that I did specifically for my skin was use Juve Red Light Therapy. This was also huge highly recommend. It definitely helped reduce the itching and the next day after I'd use it I would wake up and my skin would definitely be a slightly improved texture. I was doing it about every other day and I would spend probably about an hour using it and just doing different segments of my body for 20 minutes. Of all things I think it's the red light therapy that had the most immediate effect on my skin and how I felt. But getting direct sunlight on my skin, I've also found to be incredibly beneficial. I was doing that very regularly in month one because it was still summer and like warm outside and sunny. And I think that majorly contributed to how fast I healed in month one. And then in the last two or three months, I've also been making more of an effort to get daily sun exposure. And as you can tell, I am looking pretty good now. And while I didn't do no moisture therapy or moisture withdrawal, I did limit my showers. I showered maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. I didn't limit the amount of time I spent in the shower because honestly, being in water was like one of the only times I felt okay, except when it was causing me to be super itchy. But I did find that the more contact my skin had with water, the drier it would get, the worse it would get. So I definitely limited my showers. And then I also placed a major focus on de-stressing because stress was one of the main triggers for my flares. So one of the big things I did is I quit exercising. All I did was I went on my daily walks. I still aimed for about 10,000 steps, but I would just walk at a pace that I was comfortable with and I didn't push my body harder than that. From what I've seen, some people are perfectly comfortable exercising while going through topical steroid withdrawal. I just physically could not have done that. Like. I could barely bend my knees at one point. There was no way I was gonna squat. And also exercise is a stressor on the body. If you're healthy, it's a good stressor. But if you already have a ton of stress going on, then that just adds extra stress and it creates something else that your body has to deal with. And so I just chose to completely eliminate it. I also placed a huge emphasis on sleep, even though I couldn't really sleep well. I was still making sure that I was setting aside enough time for sleep. I also started implementing meditation probably coulda shoulda been a little bit better about this but i definitely think that when i did it it was helpful i think for me it was most helpful in maintaining a more positive mindset and not letting myself get caught up in the pain of what i was going through and then i also took major steps to reduce my workload i had been working way too hard, way too much. So I started setting limits. I was like, okay, I have to stop working by 10 p.m. every day. Like, I can't let myself just work 24 seven and stress myself out about always working. I also followed a detox protocol or just a series of things to support my liver because I wanted to make sure, you know, the steroids were getting efficiently flushed out of my body. This involved doing regular castor oil packs also a huge, huge thing that I felt made a big impact on my sleep. I definitely slept better on the nights that I did them right before I went to bed. Oh, I do have a whole video dedicated to my detox protocols I was using as I went through this, so I will link that down in the description box below as well. But in short, it was castor oil packs. I made sure to eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables and bitter greens, including I had so much dandelion tea. I'm still drinking a ton of dandelion tea. Made sure I was eating a lot of foods rich in antioxidants. I only drank filtered water with a really high quality filter. I made sure to get in regular movement to kind of help my body, you know, flush things out. And then I tried the sauna multiple times. It ended up being a pretty bad idea every time I tried it because it just dried my skin out and it was horrible. So while sauna is really good for detoxing, didn't work too well for me in conjunction with topical steroid withdrawal. And then there were two supplements that I was also taking to help with this. The first one is GI liver detox that I would take with meals. And then the other one is a GI detox. So that's just a charcoal pill. Don't take that with other medications, check with your doctor, etc. And then the last really big chunk of things that I focused on was maintaining a positive mindset. Because let me tell you, going through something this painful and excruciating for a long period of time is, not fun. I basically had the option to let myself feel and experience the pain and let that dig me into a deep depressive hole because it really would have or to make a huge effort to reframe all of this in a positive way and maintain a positive mindset around it. So I put a lot of work 
into that. As I said, I think meditation really helped with that. I also made an effort to spend more time with friends. I had an assignment of seeing one friend per week just to have some amount of social interaction. And then I spent a lot more time in nature, specifically taking beach walks. There is for me, nothing more gratitude inducing than walking along the beach. So I made sure to do that as regularly as possible. And then I tried a few other things that I didn't really do regularly or stick with. One was dry fasting. I did two dry fasts and I did feel like they helped a lot. They're just very difficult and potentially stressful on the body as well. So I just didn't get into doing them regularly. I tried cryotherapy once. I didn't really feel any immediate long-term benefits like it didn't really change anything but while I was in there I was the least itchy I had been and it was a great like two minutes of freezing cold temperatures there's a chance if I had done it more regularly it would have had more long-term benefits there's a lot of benefits to cold therapy but I got a free pass and that's why I had it and it's very expensive so I just I didn't do it regularly and then the last thing I tried was acupuncture when I had my first huge flare in high school acupuncture helped a ton so i definitely recommend trying it but this time for me it really didn't help i don't know if it was just the therapist i was seeing wasn't doing the same thing i don't know how acupuncture works but it just it really didn't have an effect on me this time so those are kind of the big blocks of what i implemented to help my body heal some other tips that i have for coping with the struggle number one sleeping with an ice pack was the best thing i did for the longest time i was like no i am strong i'm not gonna sleep with an ice pack and then one night i slept with an ice pack and i think i slept with an ice pack in my bed for about five or six months it was so much better for when i would wake up in the middle of the night super itchy i could just grab the ice pack slap it on and try to numb some of that as opposed to just like trying to grit and endure it like don't try to just endure it. Stick on the ice pack. Don't be dumb like me. Also, cutting my nails short is one of the huge things that really helped because it prevented me from scratching through my skin. I literally would just cut my nails as short as physically possible. Also, as I already said, avoiding water whenever possible. Finding comfortable fabrics to wear. I think I had about three or four outfits that I just like cycled between because it was the only thing that was physically comfortable on my skin that wouldn't irritate it. And then I think one of my biggest tips is, as I said, was staying positive. Like, it's just so important to establish that positive mindset. Some things that I did were literally like dance through the pain to distract myself when I was I was staying at a friend's house cat sitting and she had stairs and so I'd have to go up and down the stairs multiple times per day but this was at like the height of when it was at its worst and so I would literally like walk up the stairs like with straight legs and I would just like sing to myself and pretend I was dancing as I was walking so that I could pretend that I was moving really slowly like with the music as opposed to because I was in so much pain. I chose to frame this as a learning and growing experience, something that, you know, was going to transform me for the better. I knew it was going to make me stronger. I knew it was helping me love my body more deeply and it really did. I knew that you know, it was forcing me to implement a lot of healthy habits and stress reducing practices that I really needed to do long before that. And if I hadn't been forced to do, stress probably would have killed me in like three years. And I reminded myself that it was okay to not be okay. It's really, really hard to do. And don't get me wrong, there were days when I felt horrible, when I was just in so much pain and I couldn't see the end of it. But having those positive thoughts to hold on to, even if maybe I didn't fully believe them, just having them there to be able to repeat them to myself and convince myself that this wasn't the end of the world, I was gonna get better, I was gonna prove that doctor wrong, that I was learning and I was growing and I was gonna come out of this a stronger, better, more positive person. That's what got me through this, 100%. So that being said, some positives that I have gained from this experience because yes, it sucked. I wish I didn't have to go through it, but I have learned and grown from it. I am a much more positive person now. I have a much more positive mindset in general. I am so much stronger than I thought. And I have a much deeper and stronger appreciation for and love for my body. Before, I loved my body for my strength, for how I felt when I exercised. I had an appreciation beyond, you know, how my body looked, but when I lost my strength and when I lost my ability to move, it forced me to dig even deeper and figure out 
what I still loved about my body. And what I found is that your body's always fighting for you. It's always on your side. It's always on your team. It's always trying to help you be as healthy as you can. Your body's like, it's your number one. And I appreciate that now more than ever. It was something I never really had to think about before. But now I know that anything could happen to like my physique and I would still love my body. I've been able to fully disconnect from associating my worth from how my body looks. Also learned how to degaff while walking down the street looking hideous. <laughs> and overall, because of this, I'm living a much healthier lifestyle and I have so much better coping mechanisms for stress. I'm so much, I'm still working on the stress, not there yet, but like, it's so much better than it was a year ago. So moving forward, a lot of people have asked me what I plan on doing to treat the condition that originally made me use topical steroids, which was eczema. And it does not appear that I have any eczema at this point. It appears that I am fully healed from everything. But if I do get small patches of eczema in the future, I plan on just using diet and lifestyle changes to help mitigate that. Lots of people with eczema have been successfully able to treat it with just the autoimmune protocol. So I think I'm leaning towards that. I do not plan on ever using topical steroids again. I hope to never use any kind of steroids at all in the future. What I wish I had done way back when I was in middle school is just use diet to treat the eczema and never use topical steroids in the first place, but obviously I had no idea about anything back then. So we are where we are, which is a year of topical steroid withdrawal, and I feel like I am mostly healed. The cortisol issues may take a little bit longer to heal, especially now that I've also come off of hormonal birth control, which is also gonna mess up my cortisol and all my other hormones. So at this point, like any issues that I might have might be due to either one. My skin may flare again. I don't know. It is possible that I'm not actually healed and in a year I'm just gonna be right back where I was, but fingers crossed really hope that doesn't happen. The plan moving forward is just to continue with a lot of the healthier lifestyle practices that I built in, doing some regular meditation, journaling, managing my stress, keeping inflammation low in order to just combat any sort of health issue, honestly. And I want the main takeaway from this video, this very, very long video, to be that if you have any health issue, whether it be topical steroid withdrawal, an autoimmune issue, something else, a hormone imbalance, the healthier you are, the easier it'll be for your body to heal. That doesn't mean that, you know, you're guaranteed to heal within a year. It doesn't mean you're guaranteed anything. It just means that relative to how you would have healed before, you will more than likely be able to heal faster with healthy lifestyle and diet changes. Anything you can do to promote overall health is going to have a positive effect on your healing journey. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching this video. Thank you to all of you who stuck around through this journey. Like honestly, I was gonna make it through without crying. Going through this was so difficult and painful. And I was able to stay really positive when I was going through it, but looking back on it, it was so hard. And I'm really grateful for all of you guys that stuck around while I had to like take a break from fitness just to focus on health and wellness and healing. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm crying. <sighs> Thank you for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. I hope me sharing my journey has helped you guys in some way, shape, or form. And yeah, okay, now I just, I can't think of words anymore. <laughs> Basically, thank you, I love you guys, and to the doctor who told me that celiac disease is overhyped and I don't need to worry about not eating gluten and it was gonna take me three to four years to heal and there was nothing that I could do to heal faster, I told you so. Suck it. 
I feel like even though this video was insanely long, I just barely scratched the surface. So if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will link everything that I talked about down in the description. I'll list everything that I did to help my body heal with links to like all the different products and stuff that I felt were particularly profoundly helpful for me. So if any of you are going through this, I really, really hope this helps you heal because I know how tough it is. I know I am here with you and I'm here to help you. If you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to help me celebrate being theoretically healed from topical steroid withdrawal. And please share this video. We need to spread awareness for topical steroid withdrawal because so many more people are going through this than think they are and I hope this can help some people. If you want to see more videos about my topical steroid withdrawal journey, you can check them out over here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see future videos from me. Hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video and I will see you very soon. Bye!